Okay. Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is a great day to serve the Lord. Amen. That's right. Give him some praise. Give him some praise. God is good. And all the time. Amen. Amen. We can say that because we know it, because we experience it every day in our lives. We know God is real, not because of something we heard, but because we've seen it, experienced it, felt it. God is good. Amen. We can't help but praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. We welcome you here, those that are in the sanctuary, those that are out in the uh, Facebook Live land. Welcome you to today's service. Uh, sit back, relax, get comfortable, because we're going to have a hallelujah good day. Amen. 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 My spirit feels good. Amen. My spirit feels good. I know yours feels good. And I know Pastor is going to take us to the mountaintop today. So pray with him, pray for him this day. Amen, amen. It's been a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful week. Amen, amen. And before I get to my opening up, I want to share some real good news with y'all. Uh, this time last week, the doctors called me and told me I'm, I'm on 24-hour notice. Uh, stay by the phone because they might have called me about my son. Okay, uh, he, he really wasn't doing too well. They had the VA hospital locked down. No one's getting in because one of the staff got sick. And they shut it down for all visitors. But they gave me special permission to come 24 hours a day whenever I want to go there. Amen. But the praise report today is Jackie's doing well. Amen. Amen. He's doing well. Amen. God is good. God is good. God is good. He's still not out the woods, but I can smile. I can breathe. Amen. Got some good sleep last night. Didn't have to worry about anything because he's in his hands. We know God is good. This is a wonderful, wonderful day. Every day is wonderful because God is the day that God has made. Amen. Amen. Today's scripture, well, opening up this morning, I want to read to you from uh, Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 10. And it reads as follows. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, Thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. In verse 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Amen. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. God is good. God is good. Let us, let us pray. Lord, we thank you, thank you, thank you for this wonderful day, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to come together, to greet each other, to heaven the Father, to worship you in spirit and in truth, dear Father. And we just thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Father, we know that there are a lot of things going on in this world, things going on in our families. But we know that we know that we know, Father, that you're the one who has all of us in your hands. So we just thank you, Lord, because there's no better place to be than the hands of a loving God. So we want to praise you this day, lifting up your holy name. Your word says where two or three are gathered in the and your name, Jesus Christ, will be there. So welcome, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for being with us this day and every day. Thank you for your Holy Spirit who indwells us and will never, ever leave us. Now or throughout all eternity. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for your wisdom, the Lord. Thank you for your glory. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace, the Father. We want to praise your name this day. And we pray that this day, Heavenly Father, as the word goes out, it will prick some man, woman, girl, or boy's heart. And either lift them up, Bring the close relationship to you, Lord. I have someone accept Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. And we thank you, thank you, thank you. Praising your holy name to heaven, the Father. Praying to all your saints who are daily. Have a regeneration in their hearts and their spirits and souls. Feed them to heaven, the Father. Lift us up. Strengthen us, the Father. That we may continue to serve you in truth and in spirit. With all our heart, all our might, and all our strength. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen and amen. Amen. Man, God is good. God is good. Amen. He is so, so very, very good. Amen. Amen. Um, going to have our scripture today come from Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians, chapter four, verses nine through ten. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8, 9, and 10. When you get there, please stand. 
Those of you out in Facebook land, stand with us also. I shall be reading from the King James Version, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8, 9, and 10. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing in the body of the dying of, of our Lord Jesus Christ, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our bodies. Amen. May the Lord give a blessing to hear us and do us of his holy word. You may be seated. Amen. 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 Uh, the past few weeks we've not been reading from the, the uh, pastor's desk, but he does have a, 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 some words for us. Amen. It says, a summer sentence. The seven days without prayer make one week, or the seven days without prayer make one week. Amen. Amen. The seven days without prayer make one week, that's W-E-E-K, or the seven days without prayer makes one week, W-E-A-K. Amen, amen. Think about it. Think about it. Amen. That's, that's pretty good. Amen. God is good. Amen. Well, not only does God's words give us comfort and encouragement, but also gives us something to think about. Amen. Amen. We think about that. Because we know God is a God from which all good things come. Amen. We can always rely on God. Amen. 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 I'm going to turn it over to our pastor right now. Let's greet him as he comes forward. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, Amen. Amen. All those out in Facebook online land, we welcome you to the service today. We pray that something is said and spoken that might encourage your heart and soul in the Lord. We know that um, we're still in the middle of the uh, pandemic, if you will, but we're still trusting God. We're still meeting together. Amen. And we're still asking God to do only what God could do, and that's keep us, protect us, wash over us, and use us for his mighty work. Amen? We did get a chance, my wife and I, to hand out some of the back-to-school baskets this past week, and we had a family come down. We had a nice talk with them, inviting them out to service, and let them know that we're here for them, and we uh, will be uh, praying for them. Obviously, like a lot of people, because the pandemic numbers are starting to go back the other way, people are a bit more reluctant uh, to, to come together. But nevertheless, we will continue to encourage them and others. Because at the end of the day, uh, the Bible does tell us not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. We could do so in a safe manner, but sometimes we just need to see a face. Amen? Amen? Just need to see faces. So we encourage you who are seeing us online to come out with us one Sunday, more than one Sunday, quite frankly. And if you've been uh, blessed by what you've heard, we want you to be a part of this physical assembly. Amen? Amen. We do social distance. We do wear a mask. We, we do take all the precautions that we need to take. Uh, but we would like to see you to be a part of us at Montgomery Baptist Church. Amen. The word for today, what to do when you are hurting. What to do when you are hurting. Sometimes we hurt, amen? I know it amazes me when you ask people how they're doing. If you ask a child of God that, many times they respond with a positive phrase such as, I'm, I'm like a blessed and like a highly favorite. Well, that's true. That's your state that you're in. But that doesn't answer the question. How are you doing? We know we're blessed and we're highly favored, but how are you doing? Sometimes we're just hurting, and especially in this world today, there's a lot of pain to go around. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 through 10, we are troubled on every side, say every, Amen. yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed, 
always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest or revealed or shown in our bodies. Father, in Jesus' name, we come before you, thanking you for the word that you have given your servant today. I pray that the words of my mouth, the meditations upon my heart, might be acceptable in your sight, and that when it's all said and done, Father, we might leave this place saying it was good for us to be in the house of the Lord, because there we felt his presence, we felt his spirit, we were blessed and challenged to go live the life, even in the midst of this pandemic, that you want us to live. So just give us now what you have for us this morning and help us to uh, prepare ourselves for this coming week that we might go back into work, into our offices tomorrow, knowing that we have heard a word from the Lord and that will encourage us in our daily lives. Father, whatever our needs are, spiritual, physical, emotional, we pray that you will meet that need and just help us to have the courage to follow you. Bless now, we pray, and bless your servant, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, Troubled, persecuted, all right, distressed, cast down. These are all words that we're going to highlight today as we talk about what to do when you are hurting. Now, I'm working with my new little toy, this little red pointer. So I told Eva, don't give me too much control just yet. Let me work my way into it. But uh, you'll be seeing some different things this morning. Hopefully that will make the word of God even more, more like a plane. We are troubled. Uh, that looks like somebody who's troubled. Okay. Have you ever been troubled before? Okay. Yes. All that live godly in Christ Jesus are going to face some trouble and some persecution. We are perplexed. Have you ever been perplexed before? In our world we live in today, we certainly could say we're perplexed. There are simple things a person can do to help their health, but as we know, some people just don't want to do it. Okay, and it's perplexing because the numbers show what you need to do to help encourage your health. It's perplexing that people just simply don't do what they know is right to do. Okay. And the third word that we're going to look at this morning, we are persecuted, persecuted. You know, somebody is always after you. Somebody's always after your job. They're persecuting you, okay? They're, they're antagonizing you. Now, again, God's word tells us that if we live godly in him, we're going to suffer some persecution. If you tell me that your life is fantastic and nobody's bothering you, Nobody's challenging your faith. I'm going to ask you, I'm going to challenge you and ask you, how are you living? And the last phrase we're going to look at this morning is cast down, cast down. Folks, sometime we're just cast down. Amen. So as we see, we see that we are troubled, we are perplexed, we are persecuted, and we are cast down. Those are all things that the child of God experiences, especially in 2021, all things that we experience. What do we do when we find ourselves hurting in these manners, in these ways, rather it's being cast down, rather it's being persecuted, rather it's being troubled, rather it's being just perplexed? You ever see something and go, hmm, you kind of, what, what, what are they thinking? Okay. We live in a world where people are hurting, and that goes into the church of God as well, by the way, and people need help. The other day, my wife and I were down here, as I said, when we were handing out the backpacks, we saw a couple of homeless young men. You've probably seen them on the corner before. One has a shopping cart with at least 40 bags of whatever he has in those bags in it. And just going through his stuff systematically with an empty cart going from one cart to the other cart. And we know enough to know when we see people like that, that if you go up to them and say, let me help you or you need to move that bag, it's just not going to be received well. We saw another gentleman literally just walking down 355 in the middle of traffic, into oncoming traffic. Just walking freely in the middle of traffic. 
and your heart goes out because you, you realize that's a troubled person. Because in the natural, in the normal thing of life, it would be perplexing for somebody to just go walk against traffic on the main highway. You just wouldn't do that. In our walk with the Lord, especially again in 2021, there are going to be times when we just don't get it and we feel like we're troubled. Proverbs chapter 18. I'm going, I'm going to skip the first one and get to number two and then we'll go back. One of the things we have to do is don't isolate yourself. Amen? Amen. When you are hurting, when you are troubled, don't isolate yourself. Have some friends. Now, you could probably count your real friends on one hand. Not people you know, but real friends. The friend is the one that could call you in the middle of the night. The friend is the one that could call you and say, can we talk? And you would drop whatever you're doing and you would talk. You have to have some friends, God-fearing friends, okay, who've been through something themselves. See, I don't need to talk to people who ain't never been through nothing. Amen. 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 How are you going to help me if you, ain't, if you ain't been through nothing in your life? I need somebody who got some scar tissue, if you will. One of the jokes I have when we deal with a, 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 a lot of new staff and new officers, if they bring them by, one of my lines, and I don't say it much today because I know we're living in changing d- days and times, but I would always ask the young man, let me see some scar tissue. And he looked at, well, why did chaplain want to see some scar tissue? Because I need to know if you've been through something. Because sometimes it gets kind of warm in here. And if I'm the one that has to call you, I need to know that you better handle the situation. See, I want to deal with people who have some bumps and bruises in life. Somebody who's been down, but God kept them, and now they have an even greater testimony. Okay, 1824 in our Proverbs tells us this. A man that has friends must show himself friendly. And it goes on to say, there is a friend that is closer than our brother. And that friend, of course, is the Lord himself. But if you want to have friends, you've got to show yourself to be a friendly person, saints. If you're one of these ones who just think, I'm just going to deal with me, myself, and I, if those are your three friends, it's not going to work well for you. You have to show yourself to be a friendly person, even in the midst of pain. You realize that even when we have pain and sorrow, you know, in our life, that doesn't give us a reason not to be friendly. We still should be friendly and have the right spirit about us, even when we're hurting. And nobody understands the pain you're going through at that time but you. We could relate, but we don't understand it the same way because it's your pain. But you got to show yourself to be a friendly person. Okay? Sometimes you just don't want to deal with people. Yesterday I was thanking somebody. They texted me and said, I don't know why, but we were just praying for you today. And I said, thank you because you couldn't have picked a better day. I appreciate that friendship that causes you to pray for me. Because yesterday was a very difficult day. But the fact that somebody was praying for me makes all the difference in the world. It's good to have friends who will pray for you, amen? But you gotta be a friendly sort yourself. And by the way, being friends doesn't mean you're always gonna agree, okay? But you learn to be friends even through the disagreement. You learn to respect and to love. And the Bible does tell us, by the way, that iron sharpens iron. So even if we don't agree, we should get something from each other. Amen? Amen. We got to be friendly. There are times at work when I don't want to deal with a lot of people. But then I'm reminded, why did I bring you here? To change lives. So even though you ain't had your first cup of tea yet this morning, okay, If something comes up and you are needed to talk with somebody, you've got to be friendly. See, we've got to be friendly even when we don't like. There are times, I can remember uh, pre-pandemic, and I'm sure Pastor Thomas can relate to this. Sometime when you're done speaking and preaching and you put everything you had into that word for the day, you just want to go home with your family or just go out to a restaurant, get something to eat, and just relax for a minute. Because it does take something out of you. Now, God puts it right back in you, but it takes something out of you. And 
Sometimes when you get that call from somebody who, I appreciate that word that they passed up, but I just want to let you know, you were off by one verse when you quoted that scripture. It was really John 3 and 17, but I could see anybody could make that mistake. And you would get calls like this, and it's all you could do is stay friendly. I, I saw you in the store the other day, and, 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 and you were moving kind of fast. I don't know if you saw me or not, and when they say that, that should be like the whole end of it right there. You don't know if I saw you or not, but you didn't speak to me. Or you spoke to me real fast. Because you were moving. I could have been in need. You could have been in need. I was in need to keep it moving. But you got to be friendly. Is it easy always to be friendly in this world we live in today? No, it's not. But if you are hurting, don't let that change who you are. A God-fearing, friendly person. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, when you are hurting, you got to learn to watch the company you keep. Somebody say, watch the company. Now, I'm going to say this, and I know you'll understand this, but you can't have everybody in your house, can you? Not everybody. Okay. You got to watch the company you keep. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 17. Paul is writing. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye what? Separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And verse 18, and will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Folks, you got to watch who you're hanging around with. You're not going to be encouraged by a bunch of ungodly people. When you are hurting and need some support, you got to make sure you are around those who could give you that support. The Bible does say, don't cast your pearls before who? Before swine. Does everybody need to know your business all the time? No. Sometimes the old saying, it really is an A and B conversation. It's not an A through Z conversation. Sometimes you got to say, this is an A and B conversation and C is not coming. Okay? Because you just can't Say everything to everybody. You got to watch the company you keep. Well, we're just hanging out, and before you know it, something's going on, and now you got caught up in it. Now you're a witness in it. Now you done been scarred by it. Now somebody's coming to you. I saw who you were with. I saw what you said and what they did, and you just stood right there. You know, I've been invited over the years and, and, and I had the pleasure of going to a lot of retirement parties over the years, which is co common when you work with people and you have been them a long time and they retire. You go give them your regards and love and so on. But one of the things I've learned about being a child of God, a minister or a chaplain, a pastor, if I attend, whether it's a retirement party or a Christmas party or whatever kind of party, one of the things I've learned over the years, you got to know when to get up and leave. Amen? Amen? When they start putting the lampshades, so to speak, on their heads, and when they start trying to play little drinking games and who could go doubles and triples and all this, you know what? You pay your respects to the person you came to support, and then you learn how to back your way out. One of the last ones I went to, people noticed, a couple people told me at a work the next day, I noticed you were right by the door and you had your back against the wall. And you could see everybody that was coming in and all that. And I said, there's a reason for that, because I wanted to greet the people I need to greet. I certainly want to bring the honor to the person who's moving on. And then I know when it's time for me just to get off the stool and walk on out. And it's okay. It's not that I don't like you and don't love the people I work with, but there are certain times where I just don't need to be a part of that. You got to watch the company you keep even when you're hurting. Don't say, well, I'm hurting, so I don't care. Because that's just right when the devil is going to take advantage of you and the pain that you are feeling. 
you got to know when it's time to move on, saints. That's when Paul says that the Lord says, I'll be a father unto you and you'll be my sons and daughters. That's called family, by the way. Amen. Amen. I'll be your father. I'll be the God of all your comfort. I will be the one that helps you. But you got to get out of that situation. God does not bless a mess. And when we need to separate ourselves, we need to separate ourselves so we can feel his blessings and his presence and his comfort. Amen? Amen. So sometimes, even though your intentions are well and well-meaning, you've got to move on. So he could bless you even more. Third thing I want you to see, it actually says point number two, but it's point number three, is to take care of your temple. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Eva, if we could change that to that one, please. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Take care of your temple. Your temple is the body. Okay. And believe me, I know as well as anybody the importance of taking care of your temple. Even when your temple got some repairs needed, you still got to take care of your temple. Amen. Amen. You might want to go to the gym, but you can't put in two hours worth of work. Go put in 20 minutes worth of work. You can't curl 20 pounds or curl 10 pounds. Okay. You can't push that little weight rack with 245s or push it with 145. Okay. You got to take care of yourself, don't you, in this world we're in today. What does Paul say in verse 26 of our first Corinthians 9? I therefore, so run I. Not as uncertainty. In other words, I got confidence. In this Christian world and in this Christian life, you got to have confidence. Amen? Amen. So when you're hurting, you still got to be confident, but you got to do certain things. So I'm not running with uncertainty. I'm not fighting like that. I'm not fighting as one who's just beating the air. I'm not shadow boxing. I'm not wasting my time. Okay. When you go work out at the gym, you want to see some results. Amen. Whether it's you made 5,000 steps or 10,000 steps or whether you burn 100 calories or 1,000 calories, you want to see some results. Amen? Amen. One of the worst things we do when we're hurting is we just pull back and figure, I'm just going to eat hamburgers all day. Or go to the ice cream bowl. God bless you if you want a bowl of ice cream and even if you want a hamburger. But if you're going to make that your special diet because you're hurting, who is that going to hurt even more? Yourself. Even more so when you find yourself in physical, spiritual pain, you've got to take care of your bodies. What does he say in verse 27? But I keep under my body. I keep things in check. I stay on top of it and bring it into subjection, obedience. Less so that by any means when I have preached to others... I myself shall be a castaway because I didn't take care of myself. See, thank God that he's the God of second and third chances because when we were growing up, we did some things that were crazy. But God spared us. I, I told you year, many years ago when, when I used to ride, ride bikes back in the day when I was a young teenager and me and my childhood best friend, we would play these crazy games. We would either ride down the street where we knew all these dogs were running loose and we see who could ride the fastest to beat the dog for the dog got the ankles of the next guy. Now, the only problem with that was if you went the fastest, you were dealing with something biting at your heels. The other thing that we did that was really crazy, we would go find a, like a bridge in the neighborhood, had all these old dogs like a bridges, and our trick was to ride down the bridge with no hands. Just because we were young and foolish and we thought it was a good thing to do. It was a good thing for me to do until I went over the handlebars and still got the scar tissue to show for it. See, that wasn't taking care of my body. See, by the way, when you don't take care of yourself like you should, I just heard it said, you thank God for his grace and mercy. Amen? Amen. Because God is there to help you. 
And even though I was bleeding a little bit and, and hurting a little bit, uh, I could almost even at that age hear God saying, I'm going to pick you up and bandage you up. But if you ever do this again. <laughs> See, we've got to learn to take care of ourselves. Even when, 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 when you don't want to follow orders, I got some orders from a, a doctor this week, and it was like, I got to the point now where I have to have my wife read it because I'm like, you got to read this too. I, I just can't keep up with all this so that we both know. And because you omit some things sometimes, obviously. And so as you're reading this and you realize, okay, it wasn't like somebody just sat in the room and said, let's give him 10 things to do that are going to be really hard. And let's see if he'll follow instructions or, or if she'll follow instructions. These are things to help you get better. When you work out, the primary reason is to help your physical body and your emotional body and your mental body get better. Amen? Amen. But you've got to take care of yourself even when you're hurting. Don't use that for an excuse just to sit and what I call the uh, three S's, sit, sob, and sag. Okay? You've got you to go for that walk in the neighborhood. I admire Pastor Thomas, but he told me this morning that they got up early and they went for an early morning walk. And I smiled and said, that's ambition. You know, that's good. Now, some might go for an early morning walk. Some might go for a mid-evening walk. But sometimes you just need to walk, don't you? It doesn't matter if you don't walk 20 miles. Nobody's telling you to be on Fox News because you're going to be the next one to walk across the state of Maryland or the United States, just walk. Sometimes you don't feel good, and when you're hurting, again, you just you eat all the wrong things. Just make it in your mind, I'm going to eat something healthier today. You know, salad, I mean, the word salad, I know it used to be to me, but it's not anymore. It's not a bad word. <laughs> okay? Salad could be a good word. Light dressing as opposed to the can't, cannot see through that dress because it's so thick isn't always the best option. <laughs> Amen? Amen? You know, I try to get in the habit when we go out to eat now to always have a salad, but I really don't want them giving me their choices of dressing. I just assume they, they give me that light dressing that comes with because if you say certain dressings to me, then I'm done. But sometimes you got to realize, no, you got to just... Go light. You got to take care of yourself. Sometime rather than drinking 40 ounces of Sprite, drink 40 ounces of water. We've got to do a better job of taking care of ourselves, even when we're hurling. Now, we can't control certain things happen to us. I understand that most, you know, for sure. You understand that. But there are some things we do when we're hurting that we just have to do better. We just have to do better so that we're not cast away while we're trying to preach to others. You know, as much as I could preach from home and preach from a bed or preach from a reclining chair, okay, I think it's a whole lot better when I'm preaching to you face to face. Amen? Amen. And that we're striving to take care of ourselves. Well, Pastor, you don't understand the pain I'm feeling. I just don't feel like doing anything. That's where you get that friend that helps you and calls you up and says, I know you don't feel like it, but let's get up and go anyway. I never forget my little grandson, and he had to be three or four at the time, years back when I was in therapy for my knee after the surgery. And, you know, when you go in some therapeutic environments, you know, they're going to work you pretty good. And you realize they're charging you pretty good, so you might as well let them work you pretty good. And he had come up at the end of a day, whatever, him and my son came up, and I, I, I was ready to just chill out, worn out, whatever. And I was using the uh, walker at the time. And we've always, thanked the Lord, had a pretty good connection. And as I'm getting ready to sit down, and I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that my wife still has this on video someplace, he says to me, okay, granddad, come on, let's go again. And I'm like, you're my grandson, I love you. But I ain't trying to go again. 
But he wouldn't let it go. Let's go again. And so we went again. See, sometimes when you're down and out, and even though it hurts, you got to go again, don't you? Amen. You got to go again. Sometimes the gym is the last place on your mind. And it's funny because we can have things at home, but sometimes we use them and sometimes we don't. Sometimes they turn into coat racks and something to put the plants on. Okay. And sometimes you just got to get out of your house and go to the gym or go for that early morning walk or that late walk or that afternoon walk. Well, it looks like rain. I, no, you're not going to melt. <laughs> they make umbrellas for that. Okay. Just take care of your body so you're not cast away while you're trying to reach other people. You never know when you're making a difference. Sometimes we need encouragement. Amen? Amen. Even your pastor, even uh, whether you're in ministry, you need encouragement. There's a few folks who know what I'm going through at work, people that kind of are on the need-to-know basis, if you will. And... and uh, one of them stopped by, and, and, and she just, she was training somebody else, and she just picked them out and says, you know, Rev, you all right? I go, yeah, I'm good, I'm good. You got this? I says, yeah, I got this. And then she said, you got to make sure you keep this, because just in case you didn't hear it or you need to hear it, you are making a difference. So whatever you got to do, you just got to do it. Sometimes we just got to help each other, but we got to keep moving in the meantime, don't we? Take care of yourself. Pain is not an excuse for us just to sit down and give up. Because in this world we live in today, you're going to have some pain. You're going to have some hurt. You got to remember Moses. And I'm, I'm not going to give you a text you could... Go to that that's in like a Exodus, of course. But remember when Moses was called by God? What was Moses' excuse originally for not wanting to go? He had a few of them. I stutter. I, I this ain't this ain't your job for me. You know, I got a brother and blah blah blah. And the Lord says, Okay, I'm gonna get your brother involved, but I'm still calling you. See, that tells me what God has for you is for you. Okay, now you can be honest with God and say, well, I have this impediment that that doesn't allow me to talk clearly and in a fast manner. And I got to deal with all these millions of people and and I can't even get a sentence out. But if God says I cause you, then it's you. You can be honest, but it doesn't change the call upon your life. Yes, God wants us to be honest with him. Yes, when when he called me into ministry, uh, there were a lot of things that I didn't really care for. But it didn't change the fact. I, didn't, I really didn't care for the fact of when I first started many, many years ago in full-time ministry that your salary was going to be cut in half. I really didn't care for that. But the Lord said, I'm calling you anyway. And I'm always going to provide for you. You're not going to go hungry. You're not going to lose your house. You still have a vehicle or two. You're still going to look the part because you're the person that I called for the part. I cannot tell you. I've shared with you over the years how many times people have just blessed me and my family and just blessed me and just said, don't even talk about it. Just take it and run. Because you got work to do. So you can be honest with God, but that doesn't change the fact that God still wants you to, to be right with him and to do his will. Even when you're hurting, Lord, I need a break. I need a break. If, 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 if God counted up the number of times, I'm sure I told him, God, I need a break. It'd be a few times. The Lord always reminds me, the work's not done. The work's not done. The work's not done. I called you, and when I need you to lay it down or sit it down or put it down, then I'll let you know that too. But right now, you could be honest. I'm glad you're honest, Russ, but I'm honest too. I'm God. Okay? And I got work for you to do. 
People always ask me at the facility, when, everybody leaving, man, when are you going to be leaving? Well, when I can. Now, in the back of my mind, I'm like, if a ship comes in, there are two small boats. But honestly, it's all about God's timing. It's all about God's timing. You've got to be honest when you're hurting. And if you're hurting, if you're stuttering through life, so to speak, you be honest with God. But God still knows and God still has a job for you to do. So your pain, again, does not stop you from doing God's will and purpose for your life. It just doesn't. You got to feed your soul. Turn to like a Joshua chapter 1. You got to feed your soul. You know, sometimes you get hungry, amen? Guess what else gets hungry? Not just your physical body, but your spiritual body gets hungry. Joshua 1 and 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate. Say meditate. meditate. Then upon it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein, that your way may be prosperous and you will be successful. Folks, you got to meditate upon the word of God. David tells us that over and over again in the book of Psalms. Many verses will tell us that. You got to feed your body, your soul with the word of God. You got to pick out a couple of verses that are fitting your life right then and there. And you got to trust God. You got to feed your soul by meditating on the word of God. There are verses I've been reading and knowing about how God heals his servants and how God heals the sick that obviously have become real important to me that I got to tell myself all the time. And I got to think about those verses. I got to think about verses like no weapon formed against you shall prosper. I got to think about verses like I will be your guide even until the end. I got to think about verses like well, if you call on to me, I'm going to answer you. I've got to think about verses like, he is the great physician. Not just the educated one or the smartest. He's the great physician. you got to feed your soul when you're hurting. You just can't stop. When you lose loved ones, you got to feed your soul Absent from the body is present with the Lord. You got to feed your soul that weeping may endure for a night, but joy is going to come in the morning. You got to feed your soul that one day we'll be together again. It's not a fairy tale. It's not, a, it's not just an abstract hope. It's real. You got to feed your soul. But I'm in so much pain. That's even more the reason why you got to feed your soul. One of the things uh, that's been sustaining me the last couple of days is a lot of soups. And it's funny because I'm a soup guy sometimes, but I'm like a old, old, like a mama's soup guy. You know, the soup with the big bones in it and the meat falling off the bones. So it turns from a soup to a stew and it's kind of meaty. But I says, you know what, let me try to get some tomato soup, some of that, uh, what's that orange vegetable I like? Yeah, squash soup. And I said, boy, that's pretty good stuff. And, and it's filling. And it's tasty. Okay. Because, okay, you can't eat this and that, and you shouldn't eat that and that, but you can eat this, and it fills my body. Well, the same way we fill our bodies, we got to fill our souls. See, it's one thing to know the Word of God and to know a couple of verses, but when you're hungry, you got to better call those back to mind. That's why Lamentations, Jeremiah tells us, these things I call to mind. Therefore, I have hope. That's why David said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. You've got to feed your soul when the devil comes a calling, and he will come a calling. You've got to feed your soul. That no, 
the Lord is not going to leave me nor forsake me. You got to feed your soul. No, devil, you're a liar. You're a liar. You are a father of all lies, the father of all lies. Jesus said it, I believe it. And that settles it. You got to feed your souls. You've also got to give yourself when you're hurting. And we've all been hurting, amen? Amen. You know, I taught a class here many years ago, and maybe it's time to bring it back. Things to say and not to say when somebody is going through some grief. And sometimes Christians and people mean, mean well, but, but they just say things that don't bring you any comfort at all. Well, he or she will want you to be weeping. They're okay. Why would you weep? They're fine. Well, I'm weeping because they're a part of me and they're no longer a part of me on this side of heaven. I know what the scripture says. But I also know that I'm not there with them. And more so, they're not here with me. Well, you know, your dad lived to be 95, so you had to expect it. Expect what? Just because they're older, just because they're sickly, we don't sit around saying, okay, God, just take them and we're good. Because we want them. Just because they are in pain, we want their pain to be taken from them, but we still want them. Well, you know, Pastor, I saw you. I, you said this verse to me a thousand times. So let me say it to you. Romans 8, 28. All things work together for good. So, you know, this is good. Really? Have you suffered any loss? Have you had multiple people die in your family? I know what the scripture says, and you certainly by now know what the scripture says. But you know what? Sometimes you've got to have time to grieve. Like Ecclesiastes chapter 3. We're going to spend a couple minutes here. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. I want to focus on verses 1 and 4. When you find it, say God is good. Ecclesiastes 3. To everything. Say everything. everything. There is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. So one of the things we've got to understand is that everything has its time. Amen. Everything has its time. Now, when that time frame is up, and only the Lord will tell you what your time frame is for that particular situation, it doesn't mean you still don't miss people and long to see them and be with them. But there's a time. There's a time to grieve. Look at verse 4. A time to weep and a time to laugh and a time to mourn and a time to dance. There's a season for these things in your life. But what we have to realize that in these seasons, the time isn't always controlled. In fact, it's never controlled by us. See, just because you lost somebody recently or 20 years ago, it doesn't mean you've forgotten them. I don't forget people in my family, my older brother who died many years ago. I never forget him. And different things will happen in life that will remind me of him or my sister or my mom or my dad. Was there a mourning period? Yes. But it doesn't mean you forget them. See, healing, when you are, I will tell you when you will be completely healed when you're with the Father. Now it's just a matter of learning how to process from day to day. Because it's a new phase in your life now, that, that, that are grieving process. Don't let anybody tell you it's been a couple years now, it's been a few months, so, 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 so you should be good. No, God just gives you what you need to make it through another day. But there's a time for grieving, and there's a time for weeping, and a time for mourning. And yes, there'll be laughter again in your life, and in your heart, and in your home. There's a time for that too. There's a time for everything the Bible tells us in this text under the sun. 
But you got to have time. How much time? That's up to the Lord to tell you how much time. But you don't forget. Oh, you got grown kids now. So what? Why you still remember folks from 20 years ago? Because they were a part of me. See, we do people a misservice by trying to tell them things like, well, God wants you just to forget and move on. You don't forget people who've been a part of your life. People that you raised, you don't forget them. And I don't even care what the relationship was, whether it was a great relationship or a cool or a medium. It doesn't matter. They were a part of you. And you're going to grieve. And for those who don't understand this, it tells me they haven't gone through any losses in their life. Not yet, but keep on living. Because time and chance happens to us all. So even when you're hurting, it's a process and there's a time to every season. And God will encourage you through that time and let you know you're not going to forget, but I need you to carry on the work of the Lord. I need you to carry on the work of taking care of your family that you still have on this side of heaven. I need you to carry on with the blessing that I gave you. But it doesn't mean you forget. You just learn to deal with it a little better every holiday, every birthday. You learn to remember people in different manners and in different ways, but you don't forget. When you're hurting, ask God to give you the time that you need, not only to process the information, but to keep living on this side of heaven and doing the things God has for you to do. Because one thing I know, when we lose somebody, it doesn't stop the work that has to be done on this side of heaven. So even when you're hurting, you got to keep going. But ask God to give you what you need to keep going. And this is, goes back to what we started with, being around the right friends. Not friends who are going to be telling you it's time for you to let go and let God and all these other sayings that we come up with over the years. I never get that time of the year for your sister, brother. I know it's that time coming up again. I just want you to know I'm here for you. I know it's still fresh in your heart and mind. We, we ain't got to say two words to each other. We could just sit and have a cup of coffee. And when you're ready to go, you just say the word and move on. We've got to learn that we've got to give people that time that they need and realize at the end of the day that it's God that's going to bring us that joy. But don't for a minute think just because it's been a few years or a few months or a few days or because they were older or that, that it's, all, it's okay. It's not okay. When you're hurting, one of the best things you could do, the last thing I want to say to you in terms of like a scripture reference is you got to create a list of thankfulness. This is so important. Psalms 119. This is, this is one of the most important points you're going to get, I hope, out of this morning's word. Psalms 119, 62. See, when you're hurting, you have trouble going to sleep sometimes, don't you? Look at verse 62. At midnight, say midnight, I will rise to give thanks unto thee because of thy righteous judgments. See, sometimes when you're in pain and you're hurting, you ain't sleeping anyway. So if you're going to get up or if you're going to be up anyway, make a list of, you know what, Lord, even though I'm hurting, even though this pain is still where I am so thankful that you have done this for me. Even though I am hurting, Lord, I am so thankful that I got my mind back. Lord, I had lost my mind for a season there, but Lord, I am so thankful at this midnight hour that you are restoring unto me the joy of my salvation. Lord, I am thankful that I have more family to look out for. Lord, I am thankful that I still have my job. Lord, I am thankful that I still have a semblance of my health. Lord, I am thankful that in the midst of my suffering and hurting and pain, you are still King of kings and Lord of lords. So if I'm going to be up at midnight because I can't sleep because I'm hurting anyway, well, Lord, I'm just going to thank you anyway because at the end of the day, you are still good to me. 
What else you going to do? Sit there and, 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 and say how angry you are? Just tell God how thankful you are. How thankful you are. That even though there's been some pain, Lord, you're just making me a little better day by day. See, learn to realize when you're hurting and in pain, you can't explain that to other people. They're not going to understand. So stop trying. Okay. You just be thankful that God is still keeping you moment by moment. Because I'm here to tell you, there are moments when you lose things and people in, in some situations, you know, in your life, that but by the grace of God, you would not only have lost your mind, it wouldn't have came back to you. But God is keeping you. We all got to get through some hurt in our lives, saints. We all got some pain that's been there for a long time. You know, we've had therapists come into the church before, and I mean, once we could get control of this pandemic a bit more, we'll have them back in again. I will be the first to tell you, I'm not opposed to good therapy. My own doctor suggested that to me. You know what? It wouldn't be a bad idea for you to see a therapist. I get it. And if you get a good God-fearing therapist who, who understands God's word and has the training, yes, that could be of great help to you. And that's okay. That's fine. But understand whether it's through therapeutic help or whether it's through a friend's help or rather it's through the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life, that even in your hurt and pain, God is still keeping you. Some of us have suffered such great losses and there are things that we wanted to do different and which we could have done different that we have been holding on to for decades. And it hurts. And it's still, it's kind of like pulling a bandaid off. The wound never healed. It's as fresh as it was the day you got it. But at midnight, get up and say, thank you, Lord. My children aren't perfect, Lord, but they're still here. I wish they would do this or that, but you're still giving me more time to work with them. Because guess what God is reminding us of? I wish you would do this or that as well, but I'm still working with you. So, yeah, there's, there's a lot of pain and hurt to go around. We don't... We don't have the time, nor would I ever say to everybody, I need you to stand up and tell me all about all your hurt and pain. We'd be here for a while. But learn to take the time you need to grieve and heal. Learn to be honest with God and yourself. Learn to keep taking care of your temple. Learn not to isolate yourself. Learn to, to, to have an attitude of gratitude and create those things that you are still thankful for, even in the midst of your pain. And yes, you got to watch the company you keep. You got to watch those that are hanging around you because perhaps they're not the best people for you at this point in your life. Learn through it all that God's going to keep you. And he has kept you. And the journey has not been just hard. It's been unbearable for many of us. But God is still on the throne. And he sees your pain. He knows it and he feels it. And he still says, I'm not going to leave you nor forsake you. One of the last things I have on my list, uh, it's not up on the screen, but is give social media a break when you're going through stuff sometimes. Sometimes the worst thing you could do is, is, is just be texting everybody under the sun or reading every post, every, every piece of Facebook post or, or like an Instagram. Sometimes you need to give yourself a little break from that. <laughs> They'll call back or you could call them back the next day. Sometimes, you know what? I don't need to read any more nonsense about nonsense. I just need to give it a break. Sometimes I'm not going to watch the news because I just don't need any more bad news. You just got to give it a break. Sometime you have to do that. Just let it go. 
we know how the world works and yes you need your phones and androids and everything else we get all that but sometimes you need to say you know what I'm shutting that down for today sometimes you need to get off Facebook and give it a break and by the way just so you know Facebook is the, the younger kids really in all the Facebook they're, they're beyond Facebook now they're on, they're on a whole lot of, you know, uh, like other social platforms. Facebook is not their number one thing anymore, as you probably know. But rather, it is your number one or not. Sometimes, you, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give it a break. I'm amazed at how many people put their personal business online for everybody to just see <laughs> and then wonder why they're being talked about on Monday morning. But you just put it out there. Sometimes you got to get out of break. Because people in the world aren't going to bear to understand your pain, and they certainly can't do anything about healing your pain. Learn to trust the Father. Get out, get some air, get some physical activity, and as long as God gives you breath, keep it moving. Feed your soul. Meditate. Well, I don't know the Bible like some of y'all do. You don't have to. Find four or five verses and just thought, I'm just going to focus on those verses. Because that's what I need in my life right now. And when you grieve, understand. It's not up to me or you to tell somebody when that period's over. God will let you know. But you just keep trusting God to carry you through the process. Because when it's all said and done, life is a process when it's all said and done. But all that it entails... Life is a process. Learn to trust God to keep you through the process. Stand to your feet. Amen. You can give God some praise. I know people are hurting right now. I know people are hurting. We try to work our way through the pain sometimes. We try other things to get us through the pain, but the pain is so real. The pain is still there. You got to ultimately trust God and take him at his word. And even though it hurts, you know who God is. And you know that God's not going to leave you nor forsake you. So just be encouraged this morning before Pastor Thomas comes to close us out. Be encouraged that God knows your pain. I don't have to know all your pain. God knows your pain. You don't have to know all my pain. God knows my pain. God knows what you're feeling right now. God knows you're feeling isolated and alone and you're hurting. But I would tell you that old song, no one understands like Jesus. God knows you need to be encouraged to get out more and to just take that walk. God knows you, well, we're going to have to get you eating better because those eating habits aren't helping you at all. God knows. You got to be honest with him. Because as this song is playing, we almost gave up. In fact, sometimes we have given up. But our Lord reached down and raise this back up. And he's holding us. He's holding your pastor. He's holding every member under the sound of my voice. He's holding those who are online right now in social media. He's holding you. Whatever you're going through, God is holding you. And he's telling you, don't give up. Just hold on. Hold on. My word is still true. I'm going to be the God of all comfort. I'm going to be the will in the middle of the will. I'm going to give you the strength to keep going. I'm going to wake you up in the morning and help you get rest that night. But you just got to hold on because I'm keeping you. I'm keeping you. Don't feel abandoned this morning, saints. Don't feel alone because God is keeping you. When I look back at my life, Lord have mercy. When I look back at what I've gone through, Lord, have mercy. When I look back at just the last four or five years of my life, Lord, have mercy. God is keeping. God is keeping. So don't ever think that you're alone in the storms of your life. 
Last thing I'll say to you is this. When the disciples were on the sea going through a raging storm, they were not alone. Jesus was with them in the boat. I'm here to remind you of a basic truth that we should know. You're not alone. Jesus is with you. Be encouraged. Pastor Thomas, once you come. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. How many of you know that the Lord kept you? Amen. Amen. How many have almost wanted to give up before in their life? Amen. I certainly, I certainly uh, have been in a time in my life where I've wanted to give up. And although the pastor gave us a lot of things today, Amen. there were some very critical points he made today in his sermon. And one of the things I just want to encourage as I look about, everybody that I'm looking at that I know of, even before I joined this church, I know have experienced some type of loss. Whether it's been Sister Carol's husband, whether it's been an ex-husband or aunties and grandmothers and mothers, <clears throat> I would tell you and I encourage you and even those that are listening, that sometimes we think that once we leave the cemetery, that it's over. Once we leave the cemetery, because when you get that phone call that somebody has passed away, you know, you get a phone call from someone and they say, I'm praying with you. But once we leave the cemetery, the phone stop ringing. The calls stop coming. But I'm here to tell you, that's when you need it the most. That's when you need it the most. <clears throat> And I'm, I'm so thankful to hear that we need to give people time to grieve. And I know the word, pastor knows the word, but I have still grieved <clears throat> the loss of my son, the loss of my brother, the loss of my mother this year. Within 18 days to lose three people, very painful. But the phone calls have stopped coming. All I have is me and my wife and our children. I, I went on my first business trip this week, and um, the meeting was over on Friday at 12 o'clock, and I was leaving Chicago, and I called my assistant. I said, put me on a, a 3 o'clock flight. And she said, well, there's only two flights, and they're both connected. One connects through Charlotte, one connects through Kansas City. And I said, well, give me the one through Kansas City, because Charlotte, there's typically weather, and I don't want to get down there and get stuck. I said, because my original flight was going to leave at 6 o'clock, and I didn't want to sit in Chicago for six hours. The car picks me up, and I get around the corner. I get a text that the flight's canceled. So I told the driver, take me back to the corporate office. I'm going to call my assistant and tell her to get me on the flight through Charlotte then. I'll try that one. She looked at that one. That one was canceled. I said, put me back on the 6 o'clock flight. I'll just figure out something to do. She said, Harry, that one's canceled too. I said, well, what's going on? The weather's nice in Maryland, and the weather's nice here. She said, I'm going to find you something out of O'Hara. She called me back, and she said, the only flight I could find was $1,000 United. When you want to get back home, it doesn't matter, because you need the strength of your family. I said, put me on the $1,000 flight. I need to get back home to be with my family. We have to remember that in times of need, in times of sorrow, we are each other's strength. And I encourage you to continue to be each other's strength. Through everything Pastor said, there was a scripture that reminded of Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 that says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not into your own understanding. Even through everything we have gone through, we need to trust the Lord. But then he said, Acknowledge him. And he will direct us through everything that we go through. And then he goes on, and I think about Philippians 4 and 13. It says, I can do all things through, tri through Christ that strengthens me. And I'm glad that I know God, because even through this, in this scripture, and I was at a funeral recently, and I think I shared with you, I went to St. Louis, and one of the scriptures was, you know, all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and called according to his purpose. And often say that this is working for my good. But even through that, we have to trust God. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise.
As we get ready to disconnect here, I want to continue to encourage you to be with us. Come out if you can to be with us. Good to see Sister Carolyn back with us. Good to see Sister Becky. Uh, she was here with us last week. Good to see all of you that are here. And certainly we encourage you to continue to spot in with us virtually uh, on social media and be a part of this service. I want to remind the members of the church that we do have a church meeting the second Sunday in uh, September. Please be a part of that uh, discussion so that we can talk about the future of Montgomery Baptist Church. We encourage everyone to come out if you can. We're wearing masks again unless you're, uh, unless you're behind the podium, but uh, if you're not behind the pulpit or the podium speaking, everyone is socially distanced and wearing a mask, so please come out and be with us if you can. We need the strength. Yeah. We need the spiritual strength of each and every one of you. We want to be able to pray for you spiritually. We want to be able to touch you spiritually. Although we cannot touch you physically, we need to be able to touch you spiritually and let you know that God still is in the blessing business. Please remember those that are in prayer, those that are sick, those that are experiencing bereavement. We want to remember those of our members that are sick. We also want to remember um, the, uh, the home going service of Sister Linda's mother that will be here on next Sunday. Amen. Continue to give her strength uh, throughout this week. Look for us on Facebook. Look for us on Facebook. Like us on Facebook. If you have a prayer request, please put it uh, out there for us so that we can pray for you. The pastoral staff of this church want to put, pray for you. And certainly, if you want to be a blessing financially to this church, I'm going to ask Sister Freda to post our uh, giving information so that you can continue to be a blessing to this church. Pastor mentioned a family that have been coming in, a young lady and young man that have been coming to this church. If you're watching us today, we want you to be a part of this ministry so this ministry can grow and we can continue to be a blessing to those in this community and abroad. God bless you. God keep you until we meet here again. I'm going to turn the service over as we disconnect. We're going to go and bless the Lord in song and in spirit. We'll see you next week. God bless you and may he keep you in the company of his care. I'm now going to turn it over to Minister Jackie. Amen. God bless.